Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse DePlantis here. Thank you for tuning into the broadcast. Got a great sermon, and it's part one. Your future is in your seed. Think about that for a minute. The only voice your future hears is the voice of your seed. That's a good statement in it. I'm going to tell you something about seed has great power. God gives you seed, but God sees harvest. So let's go into part one of this wonderful message entitled, Your Future is in Your Seed Watch. The Lord began to deal with me this morning about a sermon I ministered a few years ago, and I felt a little of the Lord to do it this morning. Entitled of this message is, Your Future is in Your Seed. Your future is in your seed. That is spiritually, that is physically, and that is financially. If you want a legacy, it's not what you do in life, it's what you leave in life that makes a legacy, in my opinion. Because the greatest miracle God can give any individual is his children, if you really think about it. So if you go on home to be with the Lord, your parent, you know, uh, uh, your children, they can see you in them. So your future is in your seed, and everything God does, he deals with the seed. Think about that for a minute. So that's not only spiritually or physically, but it's also financially in every facet of life. See, to me, you know, so many people have a, a misunderstanding of the word giving because it's been so abused over the centuries, trying to get something from you and try, instead of trying to get something to you. And that's the whole key to it. You see what I'm saying? And uh, I always say this, like Brother Copeland says, I don't live by your giving, I live by my giving. That's spiritually, physically, financially. So the economy does not affect Jesse Duplantis at all at any time. I've heard so many ministers say, you know, we slow down in the summer. We don't, never have. And I don't mean that arrogantly, never have slowed down in the summer, never. You know, some, you know I've heard some preachers get on television, you know, it's summertime and, uh, you know, which they believe in that they're gonna slow down like you're gonna go on vacation and, and quit being their partner for a month or two or whatever, I don't know, you know, but we have never had that problem ever in our ministry, ever at all. In fact, it seems like it speeds up in the summer. It really does. In fact, I called my office, I said, how y'all doing? We are loaded to the gills. <laughs> I said, well, y'all having tomorrow off? They said, yeah, I said, I'm not. How come the boss got to work with you? you know? They said, uh, ha happy freedom, praise God. You know? But the Lord has been so good and gracious. So I want to deal with that this morning, some very familiar scripture and very simple scripture, yet with great depth and revelation in it. Title of the message, your future is in your seed. I want to start reading with Mark chapter 4. Well, first, first, let's just start reading with verse 3. Hark and behold, they went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed, so he did something. Some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Notice he didn't sow it, it fell by the wayside. Sometimes people have a way of getting stuff out of your hand without you giving it. That's called falling. Mm -hmm. Some fell on stony ground, same way, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, and it will come up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no fruit. Others fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up, increased, and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. Then in verse 13, Jesus says, And he said unto them, Know you not this parable? Then how then will you know all parables? Or in other words, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't get this, you can't get anything else. The very foundation of what God does is sowing and reaping. Now notice that, notice that verse 13, that's a very important verse in your life. It says, know you not this parable, and how then will you know all parables? Or in other words, if you don't get this, you're not going to understand anything else because this is the foundation of any revelation, of any truth. It's, that's the only way you can get saved by understanding this parable. For God so loved the world, he sold his son, he sold Christ, he expected Christians. Pretty simple, wasn't it? So you got to understand that. The reason Jesus came was so you could get to God instead of God getting to you. God will get to you, but you need to get to God. Now, I want to go over the verse 24. He said unto them, take heed what you hear. Faith cometh by hearing. It doesn't come by heard. So many people are trying to develop their lives on heard all years and years ago, but it comes by hearing. With what measure you meet, notice that, that's you doing that, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that faith, or unto you that hear, shall more be given. So notice this, you got given is not just the answer to receiving. You got to have faith in your giving. You have to have faith in your seed that it will come up. That's what it said. And unto you that hear, faith come by hearing. Unto you that faith 
shall more be given. So harvest comes by what? By faith, right? Through your giving. Now, verse, verse 25, for he that hath to him shall be given. Now notice that. And he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. Now some of the people that criticize this prospect of message ought to read that Bible. Ought to read that verse right there. Glory to God. J Jesus said, if you have something, I'm going to give you more. If you don't have nothing, I'm going to take with nothing, with nothing you have. Why? Because evidently, if you're not receiving, then evidently you're not giving spiritually, physically, financially. Every day I try to do something in my life. Every day I try to give something away, whether it's spiritual, whether it's physical, or whether it's financial. Some of the greatest gifts I've ever given has been a smile. You'd be surprised, man. I can light up a room with a smile. I've done it many times. I don't go to many hospitals, ladies and gentlemen, because, you know, I'm not a pastor. I travel so much. But when I do go, I, I always remind myself to smile. So I just walk in a hospital with some of the worst thing going on. I go, hey, how y'all doing? Woo! Even intensive care. They go, good Lord. <laughs> you see people go, they, they try to break a smile. They go, <laughs> I said, y'all having problems? And they go, yes. I said, well, have no fear. Jesus is here. <laughs> Pretty simple. And it's amazing. When you just say the name of Jesus, even if people are not religious, they go, something. See, so it says in verse 25, for he that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. Now verse 26, where I'm trying to get to. And he said, so is the kingdom of God, or God's way of doing things, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and arise night and day, and the seed should spring up, or spring and grow up, and he knoweth not how. In other words, it's not your responsibility to know how it develops. It's just your responsibility to sow it. Verse 27 again, and should sleep and rise night and day. That means you shouldn't be worried about what you gave. And the seed should spring and grow up, and he knoweth not. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after the full corn, in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth immediately, now immediately is suddenly his twin brother, immediately he putteth in the sickle. So notice you got to do something. You can't just sit on your porch and wait for God to bring you a harvest. See, not only must you have seed in your hand, you must have a sickle in your hand. Because not only you are a sower, you are a harvester. Now, I don't know much about farming because I was raised in a city. You say, I'm a city boy, you know, but I, I do know this, <clears throat> and I've talked to a lot of farmers, that there's more work at harvest time than there is at sowing time. I know, forget, sometimes I've been preaching, in, in, you know, in a grain belt during harvest time, and some of them people stay in them, I believe that's called combines, stay in them combines until 12 o'clock at night. They've been working all day. I mean, as soon as the sun, just trying to get the harvest in. So I've learned something in my life. Here I'm sowing. If, if, I must have seed in my hand, but I must have a sickle in my hand. I must have a, a, a harvester to receive what I've already sowed. Now, the reason why I don't have trouble in the summertime like a lot of ministries do is because I sowed in the spring. The reason why I don't have trouble in the springtime is because I sowed in the winter. The reason why I don't have trouble in the wintertime is I sowed in the fall. The reason why I don't have you know, you understand? So I sow in summer, I sow in fall, I sow in spring, and I, I sow in some, uh, winter, and I sow in summer again. In other words, I'm constantly sowing, <clears throat> but ladies and gentlemen, I'm constantly reaping. You see, now when you understand that cycle, it don't make no difference what the world does. Why? Because you're not moved by the economy of the world. You're not working for the world to start with. The world is working for you. Let me tell you something. It's much harder to work money than it is to work for money. I remember years ago, Lord Jesus, if I could just get some money. I found out when I got a, 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 started getting a little finance, I thought it was a lot harder to work that than to work for it. Because, you know, when I finished at 5 o'clock, whatever my job was, I was finished, man. I, 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 you know, I earned my day's pay. Oh, but Jesus, when you work at money, you got to work at 24 hours a day, seven days a week. See, for it to produce. So notice this. It says this in verse 28. For the earth bringing forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and after the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is, verse 29, but when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. And then God begins to speak, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? The title of this message this morning is, Your Future is in Your Seed. So I'm going to first deal with this here. If you look at this first verse here in verse 26, verse 26 is seed time. 
That's your giving time. Verse 28 is progression time. Now that's where the trials and tribulations and tests of prosperity come. Not in the sowing, but in, in, in the progression time. While that seed is germinating. See, that's where Satan defeats most people. Not in the sowing time or the harvest time, but in the progression time. In other words, for time for seed to grow up. It's like a child. A child just screams to grow. Then after they get a certain age, they just wish they could go back. Now, in, a very, in the next few days, uh, I'm a, uh, my birthday is coming up. And, you know, I, I, I'm, really pr I, I'm not worried about my age. I, I could care less about how old I look. <laughs> it doesn't make any... It is getting a little loose. See, it, it is getting a little loose, but that's okay. It don't make no difference. Kathy can't see it, so it doesn't make any difference. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I don't really care that much about that, but I mean, you know, I, you know, if you want to take care of yourself, take care of yourself. Bless God. I had a lady get real mad at me. She said, you ought to preach against faith lifts. I said, I can't. You need one. <laughs> well, she's going to be critical, bless God. I mean, Lord Jesus, you know. I mean, my God, ain't nobody did this but yours. I tell people, you don't have no teeth. For God's sake, get some. <laughs> and glue them. Because I don't want to be smiling and watch your, feet fall, your teeth fall down. <laughs> so where most people are defeated in, the, in, in their future, whether it's spiritual, physical, or financial, is, is in the progression time. So one verse is seed time. The other uh, verse is progression time. And that last verse here where we immediately put in the sickle, that's harvest time. Now, I want to tell you something. Harvest time is the most work. But progression time, and you might excuse this, usually in people's life is the most worry. And yet the Lord said, you should not fret or worry. Or don't doubt about anything. You see, but here's something I do, and I mean this sincerely. I never forget where I sow. Never. I find if you're going to be a good business individual, you, you ought to not forget where your money is. I mean, it's kind of stupid to go put money in the bank and forget you got it. Yeah, you know how many people do that? I mean, millions of people literally do that and die. And a lot of times the, the inheritance stays in the bank for years because somebody forgot it. So let's deal with your futures in your seat. When you get pregnant, you got a progression time. Now, you just as pregnant as pregnant be. You can't feel nothing and you can't see nothing, but it's going to happen. All of a sudden, your seed is going to begin to take over your life. I'm going to deal with that in a little bit, man, on the progression. All of a sudden, the baby takes over and runs everything. The baby determines whether you look good or not when you're pregnant. Did you know that? It'll bring, it'll bring a, a, a color to your face. They say a pregnant woman is a very beautiful woman because she's got life, or she's producing life, and that life is producing for her. So let's deal first with this seed time. Write this down. Nothing great or serious or lasting can ever be done in a hurry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tie that into, uh, into the statement I've been saying all this week. Nothing great, serious, or lasting can ever be done in a hurry. You understand what I'm saying? Hurry is not for you. Some of the greatest, you know, I'm a person, I buy a lot of antiques and things, and I buy a lot of artwork. I, you know, I invest a lot. A lot of people say, but Jesse, how, you know, how, you, what do you do besides your ministry? Well, I invest a lot in, in, in artwork, and I invest a lot in antiques and real estate and different things of that nature. I kind of like doing that kind of stuff. Uh, but you know, some of this furniture <laughs> that, uh, that I have purchased in my home is two and three hundred years old, and it just looks as good today as it did when it was made. You know why? It was created not in a hurry. But I wonder how long your couch is going to last. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Because everybody right now want to do something fast. It's called, you know, get on the line, get it out, you know. Like I bought a piece of furniture that's in, my, in the foyer of my home that was in the, uh, the Palace Versailles. I have it in my house. I just like to go look at it. I just go, ugh. <laughs> then I realized how old that piece of furniture is. I thought, my Lord, that's older than my great-grandfather. That's... That is about the same age as when my family got thrown out of Paris, France and was, went to Nova Scotia where we became Acadians. And they told us to swear to the king and we didn't swear to him. We swore at him, but we didn't swear to him. <laughs> so they throw us, they throwed us out. And the four brothers from Paris, France, which was the Duplantis boys, Duplonti, migrated out of Nova Scotia down. Three brothers went to the bayous of South Louisiana Two went to New Orleans, and then one went to Little Caillou, and one went to Victoria, Texas. Now, that one that went to Victoria, he was a wild man. He must have loved women. Because the other day, I was in Victoria, Texas, and a big black man, about six foot seven, weighed about 300 pounds, come up to me. He said, 
my name is Jeffrey Duplantis. Do you think we related? I said, most likely. (laughs) 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 And I don't mind. Say, what color are you? Pick one. I've been there. I want to let you know. So nothing great or serious or lasting can ever be done in a hurry. Now, I've been saying this, and you may have wrote it down in the previous sermons. Faith and hurry are incompatible. I find out when I get in a hurry, if I'm driving, I get a ticket. There's always somebody to try to shut down your hurry. You ever notice when you're in a hurry, you always get behind an old grandma driving a car? Right? Now, when you don't have anything to do, there ain't nobody on the road. Now, there's sometimes you have, you almost, you know, <laughs> you, I, you know, people ask me all the time, but Jesse, I've been knowing you for years. Women don't seem to bother you. I said, nope. He said drinking and money and all that kind of, you know, a lot of people fall in those things. I said, nope. He said, does it, I had a friend of mine in Dallas, Texas. He said, does anything bother you? I said, yes, traffic. <laughs> traffic runs me up a tree. So I bought a plane to fly over it. <laughs> But guess what I ran into? Traffic. Do you know they got interstates right over Los Angeles in planes as well as they got down there on, them, on, on those interstates you got down here? I mean, you just got to get in line. And you don't argue about the situation. See, but every time I've gotten in a hurry, I've made a mistake. Ladies and gentlemen, hurry don't help you at all. Hurry makes you, write this down, hurry makes you overlook the small details of life. You understand what I'm saying? And you're missing some of the greatest things you could have in life. So, Nothing great, serious, or lasting can ever be done in a hurry. Faith and hurry are incompatible. So when you sow your seed, you're giving in this convention. You've given the last convention. You gave 15 years ago in the convention. You gave 25 years ago in the convention. It doesn't make any difference what time you gave. It does make a difference if you did give. Why? Not so we can get money because we're not trying to get something from you, trying to get something to you. You see what I'm saying? I don't believe in finance poverty. I said that the other day. There's so much money in finance poverty. Lord, them children still starve every year. They make sure, bless God, nothing ever changes. They're still stuck out in the desert living in a hole. Why? Because no, you know, and I, I believe in feeding children. I believe in helping people. Don't misunderstand me. But you've got to give them more than just some food in a tent. You've got to give them the will to prosper. You got to give them some. And the only way you're going to get people to prosper, you don't, <laughs> you can't get rid of poverty with money. That's simply the truth. How do you know that? The federal government, the United States federal government proves that every year. We send billions and billions of dollars overseas and people still poor, people still dying. Isn't that amazing? So what happens is what gets rid of the of, of poverty in life is the anointing. The Spirit of the Lord God's upon before he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. See, when you are an anointed minister, anointed minister Jerry was preaching last night, preaching good news, it will seed into someone's heart. And it will get them not only out of their financial trouble, but it will get them out of their natural trouble and spiritual trouble. In other words, it begins to change the whole process. So, in other words, when you understand, you sow. So when you sow, you realize that faith and hurry are incompatible. Now, write this down. The evidence of faith is not seen, but the evidence of doubt is. You see what I'm saying? The evidence of, I don't know why everybody's wanting to see something when they believe in God for something. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You see, so... To me, that's pretty simple. I don't need a theologian to help me figure that out. So if I'm praying and I'm believing God, brother, and I can't see it, I got it. Why? Because my evidence is not seen. So when the devil says, can you see it? I said, no. He said, well, aren't you sad? I said, no, that's my evidence that I got it. Now, he gets confused pretty easy. He's the author of confusion. See, I'm not moved when I see it. I'm moved when I believe it. You see, the evidence of faith is not seen. Well, what happens, Brother Jesse, when you see it? Well, then it's no longer faith, it's manifestation. Now, the evidence of doubt is seen all the time. Doubt is never a spiritual thing. Write that down. Doubt is never a spiritual thing. Doubt is always a natural, secular thing. Doubt is seen constantly. Oh, you can pick up doubt quick, much easier than you can pick up faith. Because, see, faith doesn't have a real big voice, but it does have a big footprint. Now, doubt got a big voice, ain't got a lick of a footprint whatsoever at all. Because it never knows, it doubts itself. You've heard people say, and I've said it too, if you learn to doubt your doubts, you won't be a doubter no more because your doubts have been doubted because you've learned to doubt your doubts. God said all things are possible to them that believe. The devil said that's not true. So when the devil throws doubt in your mind, doubt it. <laughs> Just use what he uses. He puts doubt in your mind and says, devil, I doubt that. He said, you can't doubt that. I said, I doubt your doubt. You can't doubt that. I'm, that's, that's my doubt. I doubt your doubt. 
Yeah, but, but that's my doubt. I don't care if it's your doubt. I doubt your doubt. Now, the devil gets confused. He starts talking to other devils. He said, listen, I put doubt in the man's mind, and he doubted. He said, how did he do that? I said, I don't know. I'm still doubting it myself. I don't know how he done it. <laughs> did you get that? So the evidence of faith is not seen, but the evidence of doubt is. See, but Brother Jesse, how do I get blessed all the time instead of just some of the time? Well, first thing first, you got seed time. I'm going to deal with those three facets. Seed time, progression time, harvest time. First thing, you got to sow. If you want a baby, you got to sow. There ain't no immaculate conception. I don't care how much you pray, mama. <laughs> you want a baby without a man, it ain't happening. It's not going to happen. You got to have us. <laughs> Shout, men. I just set y'all free. You got to have us. And we will sacrifice to be a blessing to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, it's just simply the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be responsible to the seeds that are sown into us. Let me ask you something. What do you believe when it comes to sowing and reaping? It's a great question. The Bible says that God created this world to work by the laws of seed time and harvest time. Everything starts with a seed. Every area of your life is touched by the power of a seed. It, 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 when, you were, when, you, when your mama got pregnant, it's a seed. See, when you were born, you became a harvest from that seed. Remember, if you want to reap a harvest from the seeds you sow, it's not enough to just give. You have to have faith to receive. That's Mark eleven twenty four. 24. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive. Not when you see it, not when you get it, but when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have them. See, you got to connect that with faith because faith is a powerful substance and it's in abundance if you use it. Are you learning something today? Father, I ask you to bless these wonderful people that are watching. Because God, they are sowers, they are givers. And Lord, it's time for harvest time. So Lord, let it be mixed up with a double portion of their faith in you and faith in themselves and watch them get a miracle from God. Lord, I just thank you in advance. Call those things which be not as though they were because they will be. I'm telling you, this stuff works, ladies and gentlemen. Not some of the time, all the time, but never mix faith and time because time will become your enemy. Stick with your faith. It'll be done at the right time, at the right place. And you'll be in the right area to receive what you sowed for. God doesn't lie, ladies and gentlemen, and neither does your seed. Now what? Now that you sowed your seed, believe for your harvest. Stay right there. I'll be back in just a moment to speak another word to you. Show you some wonderful things. Watch this. Jesus said he could change a nation in a day. We can preach to the world today, 7.8 billion people in seven minutes. A time has come. We have a job to do, a vision to fulfill. We're believing God for the unbelievable, the impossible, simply because it's doable. He said, now, when the uttermost parts of the world are yours, go. Every little thing that I can give him opportunity to expand, I will. He's looking for people that are bold enough to step up and say, yes, Lord, here I am. Use me. Come on. Hallelujah. The only Jesus some people may ever see is the Jesus in you or the Jesus in me. Now, let's show the world who he really is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really excited about our November product offer. It's a book I entitled, God's Not Enough. He's Too Much. I wrote it a long time ago. It's a number one bestseller. It's been a blessing of a lot. You need to get this. I mean, it's a blessing. You're going to learn about God's true nature, and you'll learn how to never limit your asking or thinking. You can't exhaust God's resources. You cannot do it. That's what this book is about. God's not enough. He's too much. How do I get it? You go to JDM.org and get all the audit information and it will help you today. 
Get this. This will help you. Partners, I can't thank you enough for all that you do for this ministry. Your faithful financial support is so vitally important in reaching people, changing lives one soul at a time. It's amazing to me, and I've said it so many times, I'm going to say it until Jesus comes. 48 years of preaching this glorious gospel, we've never had a deficit whatsoever at all. First thing first, you didn't believe that I would have one. I didn't believe that I would have one. And God didn't believe we would have one. And we have it. Everything you sent, 100 percent. Listen to me. I got to say it again. 100 percent of what you give goes in the world evangelism to reach people and change lives one soul at a time. And that's a blessing of the Lord. We're totally debt free. Been debt free since 1982. Kind of a long time ago, isn't it? But that's all right. You know, we like being debt free. We like living by faith. I thank you for your faithful financial support. We got a, we believe in God for a $20 million donor. And I'm telling you, it's, it's this close to coming because we got $20 million worth of projects that we got to do. It's already gone the minute it comes in into those two projects that are happening. So thank you for giving partners. We love you. We appreciate you. And you never will be a day without prayer. Me and Kathy pray for you every day. I'm telling you every day. And we know how to pray and we know how to receive the prayers by God so you can receive your harvest. So thank you. Until next week, don't miss this program. Part two is coming. Your future is in your seed. Now you think about that for a minute. Your seed has a voice and it's talking. Don't miss next week, okay? Jesse the plant is saying, I love you. I appreciate you. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. You can broadcast the wonderful works of God right where you are. We have been entrusted to see to it that this message gets communicated to everyone everywhere. You could be the one that changes somebody's life. You may not change thousands, but if you change one, that's all that counts. Kathy Duplantis' Glorious, A Conference for Women, March 7th and 8th, 2025. There are times when we are called to take a stand for what is right. Our November partner offer is a popular boardroom chat that Kathy and I did. It's called civil disobedience. All of us are called to be responsible citizens who obey the law unless those laws violate God's law. There's godly wisdom and direction in this. Order your copy at jdm.org and you will learn something wonderful. Thank you very much. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? The answer is no, there's not. In my book, Give God a Job, you would discover that our magnificent God is ready and able to fulfill every promise that He has for you. It's time to ask in faith and start living on earth as it is in heaven. Remember, if you keep God busy, He will keep you busy. Order your copy of my book, Give God a Job, today at jdm.org. There's seed time now, there's progression time. As I said earlier, that's where most people are defeated in life is in the progression or in the growing or the germinating of your seed. See, now you've given and you were proud to give, but then all of a sudden the devil begins to go to work and begin to say, you see that? You done lost your money. You see that? 